Hey guys, Wages World coming at you with a video. Today is uh, December 2nd, 2021. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into it here, guys. This will be an update video for you. Now, guys, it's human here. Not a whole lot going on, so I'm not even really going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, unless we have something happening with this, I'm not going to spend any time at all wasting your guys' time. So, not, not much to speak about there. Um, so we'll just head on over to uh, Space Weather Prediction Center, NOAA. And um, this is where we can talk about, you know, the geomagnetic activity. This was the G1 storm yesterday. And, and as we, we stayed pretty active all through the day, and then we're kind of tailing off again. Now, we are under a geomagnetic storm watch, which means that they're forecasting a possible hit from the sun here at the end of the day today going into tomorrow. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that materializes. But you can see our x-ray production is kind of low right now because we just haven't had very many active sunspots on the earth facing side of the sun okay that's why that that production is down kind of low now as far as our forecasting goes you can see it right here right december 2nd 3rd and 4th you can see where they're expecting this thing to impact us and we'll take a look at that filament here in a minute it released off the sun on the 29th um it could possibly give us a glancing blow and that's what they're talking about but as your first look here guys this is a corona hole and that's where a lot of our geomagnetic activity, uh, geomagnetic activity happens anyway. Um, and right now, that's really the main story when we've been talking about the sun. There's been quite a few of them, actually. Um, and these will bump us up in the uh, storm level from time to time, give us increased aurora, all that stuff, right? So um, this is uh, NOAA's version of the Enlil Spiral. You can see their forecasting here again. Uh, midway through the day, on, between the 3rd and 4th, they're seeing a density increase, which would be from that filament release, glancing blow type of thing. And we'll dig into that a little bit more here in a minute. But the speed itself is going to be coming up also. So, uh, again, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Now, you can see how the Aurora ha is still a little bit active, which is cool because they, you know, the Aurora photographers get a chance to do some stuff, right? Um, this is kind of residual from what was left over from that geomagnetic storm, okay? And we stayed active all day until just a few hours ago. And then, you know, now we're, now we're, it's probably going to start tailing off. And then if we get hit again, obviously, it'll pop back up. Okay, guys, this is, this is the Discover data. Um, the BZ right now, guys, is not even close to a negative 6. And that's what we look for. It's basically the angle which the, the solar wind can enter into our system. Um, and we look for negative 6 or bigger. And, uh, yeah, nothing going there right now, guys. So, yeah. So, the phi angle, it, it did flip a couple times. Sometimes when it flips, it'll jerk on us geomagnetically. Sometimes it can even pull us into a, a short-lived geomagnetic storm. But right now, nothing going on with that either. You can definitely see how things are very, very stable. Now, 4 on the density is what we consider normal. Um, but this is a little elevated, but it takes a whole lot more than just a little bit of an elevation and density to, uh, give us any kind of, uh, issue or any kind of uptick in solar weather. So, um, and then you can see the speed in purple and then you got the temperature in green. Not a whole lot going on there, guys. Not a whole lot at all. Okay, guys, this is the magnetopause models. Um, the sun's off to the left. Stuff's moving from left to right here. This is magnetic pressure. Um, that's representing the bow shock, this little arc here. And what that is, is it's a spot where uh, the solar wind meets our magnetic field, right? So this is a little bit active right now, and it is just leftover stuff from that geomagnetic storm, okay? Um, now we could be getting, again, we could be getting some more activity here before too long. This was a little bit more active uh, yesterday when that stuff was going on, but as of right now, it's starting to calm down again. This is density. Right, so the, the darker blue is more dense, the light, the lighter colors here, all the way to white, are lower dense uh, particles. So inside our shields, or right behind our shields, you're going to notice that it is, is not as dense. You know, our magnetic field is doing, doing its job. So that's, this is exactly what you would expect to see, right? Now this is the, the speed of the solar wind. Now the darker reds and the darker blues... Um, are the faster moving particles. Now, the, when it's showing you those, see how this red here and blue here, that's actually kind of directional because it's showing you polarity, right? 
and the solar wind gets there from a magnetic connection line, the solar wind is charged, so it has a negative and a positive. So depending on that polarity, it decides what direction it's moving. So the darker blues would be moving from right to left, and then the, the, the um, darker reds would be moving from left to right. Um, so yeah, so that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing little waves come in from time to time. Pretty, pretty normal stuff there, guys. Pretty normal stuff. Okay, guys, I got you over here at Seeds. Now, this is Lasco C2. Now, this is on the Soho Observatory, which is on a satellite about a million miles closer to the sun than what we are, and it's looking at the sun. It's from our perspective, right? Just a little bit closer. The black occulter disk is there to block out the, the majority of the light so we can even get a capture at all. So when you see this thing fire off on the southern part of the sun, that is that filament on the 29th, okay? So you can definitely see how the trajectory of it does look like it's going to sail south of us. Now it is, again, they're saying it's going to be like a glancing blow. So we'll, we'll hop over to the CME tracker over on NASA and take a look at that here in just a second. Before we do that, though, guys, we're going to take a look at SDO, which is, is also looking at the sun from our perspective. But it's in a little bit. It's a little bit closer to us. It's in geosynchronistic orbit. Does like a figure eight pattern over the same spot of the Earth, but it always looks at the sun, right? So if you guys look here, you'll see a little bit of a, a filament eruption here. It's a, be a dark shadow, and watch it flip out right there. See that? Now what that is again? That's a filament. You can kind of think of it like your incandescent light bulb's got the filament in the middle. When they break, they go out, right? And that's kind of what's going on here. This breaks, and so what it does is it flings plasma out into space. And that's, that's what's headed our way. Um, we could catch a glancing blow from this. Again, I think it's just, it's going to be a low-level storm if we even get into storm levels at all. Okay, guys, I got you over at NASA's in little spiral. As you can see over here, this is the, the top-down view. In the middle is the side view. And over here on the right is our orbital line around the sun stretched out in a straight line. So if you look at the top view, you can definitely see where it looks like it's going to hit us, like right on the right on the head, right? Well, go over to the, the side cut. Okay, you can definitely see now that it's going to be, most of it's going to sail south of Earth. Now, it, it does look like we're going to be taking a glancing blow, okay? Right about here. Now, the yellow ball is Earth. It's right underneath this red diamond right here. And then over here on, on the orbital line, it's also showing, you see where it gets blurry? It's definitely showing it's going to hit us. Now, whether or not it hits us real hard, whether or not it hits us right on the head, that's all going to, we're going to have to wait and see, guys. Regardless, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot. Maybe push us up into G1 storm, um, give us extra aurora, that kind of thing. Okay, guys, I got you over at spaceweather.com. You guys know I, I show you guys spaceweather.com all the time. It's such a great site. They do a great job over here. Please go over and give them some love. Go read their article and stuff over here. Um, they're talking about the storm watch also right here. I've already talked about that, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, but they're also talking about Comet Leonard. Now, this has been in space weather across the board for over a month now. They're talking about it because it's the brightest one of the year. Okay, and we should be able to see this with our naked eye. I would encourage you guys, again, to come over here and read this article and kind of educate yourself a little bit on that um, because you can go out and see with your naked eye. And they, they talk about a whole lot of other things here too. So, please go give them some love, and, and, you know, they're doing the work, so go check it out over there. I don't want to show you the whole thing. That way you guys can go, you know, give them the traffic. Now, this is noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are water vapor that freezes around meteor dust in the higher parts of our atmosphere, okay? They're, they're blue metallic in looking, looking um, clouds. So... We get these in the summertime in each hemisphere. Right now, they're late. This is the South Pole, right? I see a little bit of one right there and a little bit of one right there. That is nothing. You guys have seen me show you this before, and it's pretty much covered at least about, you know, this circle here, right? So, right now, they're late. I don't know why. I don't think anybody really knows why. Um, I'm sure there's some theories and stuff out there, but... I'm not sure why they're late. It could be climatological changing. It could be a whole lot of different things, guys. I, I just don't know. Um, but the fact that they're late, 
and they've been late the past couple of years. So I'm not sure if there's a, a shift going on here a little bit and what's going on um, as far as the temperature high in our atmosphere. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not seeing any data on that or anything to make any, any kind of claim like that. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they're a little bit late and we'll keep an eye on it and, you know, we'll go from there. So, but earthquakes. Okay, we just had a 5.3 up here in Alaska. Um, there, I clicked on the tsunami button here, guys. And I'm not the earthquake guy. You guys know that. I'm just showing them to you because this is part of what we do. I'm just reporting on it for you guys. There was no tsunami or of any kind, okay? Um, how do we know? Well, they're telling us there. But you can act, actually go over here to the National uh, Buoy Data Center. And what will happen here, guys, is... You see the red boxes, the red diamonds, those are inactive or not operational buoys. The yellow ones are, they're, they're actually getting data from them. They're working. So, you know, the, the earthquake was up here. So obviously the buoys aren't in event mode. So nothing's going on. Now there was one down here in event mode. I think this is probably a malfunction. I've seen this happen before. And, you know, and I, I thought, well, maybe there was an earthquake over here, you know, Maybe. So let's go look. I went over here and look. This one here, it's actually pretty far away from that buoy. Okay. I know it looks pretty similar in, in position, but this earthquake happened almost 24 hours ago. So if something was going on, we'd have already known it. Okay. Um, so I don't think it really has much to do with it because the earthquake would have been like right here where my cursor is. So, you know, I don't think they have anything to, to do with one another. Um, I could be wrong, but again, it wouldn't be anything big because I, you know, that earthquake happened almost 24 hours ago. So, but anyway, guys, if anything else happens, guys, I'll be coming back on and giving you an update. I'll be doing a couple live streams through the week. And, uh, again, if we get into storm level, I will definitely at least come on and give you a, a short explanation on what's happening and show it to you. So, yeah. So God bless. Yahusha saves. You could drink this Kool-Aid.